How's it going everyone? Nizam45 here with some more Star Trek Online. So today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I've been wanting to do this video for a while. Today, I'll be showing you all the different energy types in Star Trek Online available at the time this video was made. With Delta Rising coming out soon, with no doubt another lockbox and reputation, this list will not be complete in the future. However, the information in it will still be the same. To start off, let's look at the six basic energy types along with a few spin-offs and special variants of them. For this video, I'll be using the beam array weapon as an example, mainly because it's the most common kind of weapon most energy types come in, save a few special cases. First on the list, we have phasers. Phasers are pretty much your standard Starfleet weapon type. They are also used by the Cardassians, Terran Empire, and the True Way. Their beam color is orange, and they have a 2.5% chance to disable a random subsystem of an enemy for 5 seconds when shot. Next we have Disruptors. If you play as the Federation, you'll see this energy type a lot while leveling up. Disruptors are primarily used by the KDF, its groups including the Gorn, Klingon, Noskins, Orions, Remans, and Romulans. Disruptor beams are colored green and have a 2.5% chance to debuff an enemy's damage resistance by 10% for 15 seconds. Next is Tetrion, one of my personal favorites. Tetrion is primarily used by the Hydrogen and Tholians in-game and is referenced to be also used by Cassians as well. However, there aren't any Aatroxes in-game as NPCs, so we'll just have to go off details on that one. Tetrion is colored blue and looks similar to electricity when fired. They have a 2.5% chance to do extra damage to all shields of an enemy. The amount of damage done depends mainly on the mark of weapon and skills. Next we have Polaron. Polaron is mainly used by the Breen, the Dominion, and Jem'Hadar ships, as well as some Trueway ships. Polaron is perhaps one of my least favorite energy types, as their beams when fired look a lot like you're shooting purple jelly at your enemies, not to mention their sound is rather annoying. However, despite their aesthetics, their weapons procs are nothing to be toyed with. When fired, they have a 2.5% chance to negate 25 power to all subsystems, which makes Polaron and its relatives a great variant for drain builds. Here we have Plasma. Plasma is primarily used by the Borg, the Romulan Republic, and some Vulcan ships. It's primarily considered to be one of the most deadly weapon types in-game, and although all energy types do substantial damage, this claim mainly comes from the fact of what its prop can do. When fired, plasma weapons have a 2.5% chance to create a plasma fire DOT on an enemy ship. The damage of this DOT is determined by skills and weapons mark. The last of the basic energy types is Antiproton, which prior to Season 9 was probably the hardest of all basic energy types to obtain. Antiproton is colored red and black and is natively used by very few select Borg and Fakiri, Iconians, Undyne, and Voth. The Crystalline Entity also uses Antiproton, however, its visuals are purple rather than red. Antiproton has no real special ability or damage proc other than it gives an extra 20% critical severity when shot. This bonus is not a proc, mind you, and will always happen when you land a critical strike. Phaser, Disruptor, Tetron, Polaron, Plasma, and Antiproton. Those are the six basic energy types in game. However, still considered basic energy types, there are a couple of others aside from these. The first is Chroniton. This weapon type only comes in one kind of weapon, and that is a dual beam array. It is available only in the Lobby store priced at 200 Lobby crystals. Chroniton beams have no one specific color. Primarily, they're colored white, however, the outer edge of the beam rotates through a full spectrum of colors while being fired. Although called Chroniton, this energy type falls under the category of Antiproton and benefits from anything that enhances Antiproton weapon types. The Chroniton Dual Beam Array has two procs to its name, the first being a 2.5% chance, when fired, to significantly reduce light speed and turn rate of an enemy, similar to Chroniton Torpedoes. The second being similar but more powerful than Antiproton, which is a permanently enabled extra 40% critical severity whenever you land a critical shot. Next we have Proton Energy. This energy is not really an energy type, as it is not boosted by any kind of energy weapon console boost except for a few select reputation consoles. No NPCs have any kind of proton resistance, and very few players have resistance against it either. Proton energy weapons take only half the power costs to fire compared to most weapons. When fired, they have a 25% chance to do an amount of extra proton damage completely through shields. This amount varies on modifiers and who you're shooting at. 
Proton weapons also have a permanently increased 6% critical chance and 10% accuracy. Lastly, we'll revisit phasers for a moment, as there are two spin-offs. The two include retrofit phasers and endurian phasers. Retrofit phasers look and sound exactly like they did in the original Star Trek series with Captain Kirk. They're colored light blue and have two small beams instead of just one. You can obtain retrofit phasers by either playing Everything Old is New by Mission Replay, which allows you to obtain them up to Mark 11 Rare, or by purchasing the USS Enterprise in the Sea Store. Endorian phasers are also colored blue, however, to obtain these, you'll need to own at least one Endorian escort on a character. They can be then purchased via either the Dilithium store or Fleet stores. Both Endorian phasers and retrofit phasers are exactly the same as regular phasers, which means they have the same procs. The only difference is their colors and sound. Now that we've covered all the basic energy types, let's move on to the hybrid types. Hybrid types are energy types that fall under certain categories of basic types, but have mixed procs to include a combination of two different types. We'll start with spiral wave disruptors. Spiral wave disruptors are a combination between phasers and disruptors, leaving two separate 2.5% chances for disabling a random subsystem for 5 seconds and reducing enemy damage resistance by 10% for 5 seconds. This weapon type only comes in beamerang form and is probably the hardest and most expensive of all hybrids to obtain. To obtain and use spiral wave disruptors, you must first own a Cardassian Galar class cruiser on your character, which is only obtainable from the Cardassian lockbox. You can also purchase this ship off the exchange, however last time I checked they go for about 600 million EC. So yeah, like I said, pretty stinking hard to obtain these. Next we have Plasma Disruptor Hybrid. This weapon type is a hybrid between disruptors and plasma energy, however it falls under the disruptor category. Remember that for later. This proc includes the damage resistance debuff from disruptors and that of the plasma fire DOT from plasma weapons. This weapon only comes in at max rare Mark 11 and is available by mission replay of Past Imperfect for the Federation, Second Star to the Right Straight On Till Morning via the KDF, and Smash and Grab for the Romulans. Next up is Polarized Disruptors. This weapon type combines the procs of Polaron Energy Drain and Disruptor Damage Resistance Debuff. It is obtainable up to very rare Mark 12 and can be gotten via special requisition packs from the Temporal Lockbox. Next is Phased Tetrion. Phased Tetrion combines the procs of extra shield damage from Tetrion and the ability to disable a random subsystem from phasers. This weapon type can rank up to very rare Mark 12 and is obtainable from special requisition packs via the Tholian lockbox. Next under Tetrion as well we have Polarized Tetrion. Bet you didn't know this was a thing. Now, although considered a hybrid, this energy type does not actually contain any procs from Polaron, which means no energy drain, and is strictly Tetrion based. However, the difference lies in its proc, which is instead of a 2.5% chance to do extra shield damage, you now have a 10% chance. This type, however, is only obtainable up to rare Mark 11 currently, and is available from replaying the mission The New Link. Next up we have Protonic Polaron. This special hybrid is the only energy type to include the procs of Proton Weaponry. It has the 2.5% chance to reduce power levels from Polaron, and includes the additional 25% chance on critical hit to do extra damage through shields from Proton Weapons. This hybrid is not available from any lockbox or mission replay, and is only available for unlocking them in the Dyson Joint Command reputation at Tier 4. They cost approximately 30,000 dilithium per weapon, so they're not cheap. Next we have Dominion Polaron. Once again, you may not have known this was a thing either. Unlike the deceiving name of Polarized Tetrion earlier, this is the true mix of Polaron and Tetrion, combining the procs of Polaron's energy drain and Tetrion's shield damage. This hybrid type has a special extra 2% critical chance innate, and is obtainable from replaying the mission Boldly They Rode. Unfortunately, this type is only available at max rare Mark 11 versions. Next we have Phased Polaron, which combines the procs of Phaser's subsystem disabling and Polaron's energy drain. This is probably the best kind of energy type if you're looking to make a pure drain build. They are available up to very rare Mark 12 and come in special equipment packs from the Dominion lockbox. 
For the last of the hybrids, we have Romulan Plasma. Now, remember how I told you to recall that Plasma Disruptor Hybrid earlier? This is exactly the same kind of weapon type as that was. Exactly the same procs that combine Disruptor and Plasma. Romulan Plasma, however, is considered the most deadly energy type in the game itself, and is used on those builds you see that do 20,000 DPS. However, it is only obtainable if you unlock it in the store the Romulan Reputation at Tier 4. Each of these weapons cost around 20,000 dilithium. However, all of these are very rare Mark 12, instead of rare Mark 11 as the Plasma Disruptors were. Now that we've covered all the basic and hybrid energy types, we're pretty much done, right? <laughs> yeah, no. We're only about halfway through all the energy types in-game. Next up, we have special energy types. These types are not a combination of any two types and have special procs all on their own, aside from their base. The first up, we have Nanite Disruptors. Although this type falls under the category of Disruptors, like most special types, it does not contain the same procs as its base. Nanite Disruptor weapons have a 2.5% chance to reduce all damage of an enemy by 5% and increase shield bleed through of your weapons to their shield by 2% for 15 seconds. Nanite Disruptor weapons can be obtained via special equipment packs from the Tal Shiar lockbox and can rank up to very rare Mark 12. Next we have Ilachi Crescent. This is personally my favorite type of disruptor based weapons. Once again, it does not share the proc of its base and instead has a 2.5% chance to completely ignore your target shields and ignore 50% of their damage resistance as well. This special type is only available from the special equipment packs via the Ilachi lockbox and is obtainable up to very rare Mark 12. Next we have Refracting Tetron. Unlike most special types, Refracting and Tetrion does have the initial proc of doing extra shield damage as basic Tetrion does, but also has a secondary proc of doing additional damage to the nearest enemy ship. Like the name suggests, the weapon can actually bounce visually off after damaging the first enemy and onto another enemy. This special type is only available from the Nakara Strike Force Reputation System store at Tier 4, and costs approximately 20,000 dilithium each. Next we have Piercing Tetrion. Piercing Tetrion combines the basic Tetrion proc of extra shield damage, and also a secondary proc of an extra 2.5% chance for doing 50% of your damage through shields. This special type is only available in certain weapon forms and only ranks up to rare Mark 11, is available via the mission replay of Installation 18. Last for Tetrion, we have Destabilizing Tetrion. This weapon type is currently used by all Hyrogen NPCs in-game. Surprisingly, Destabilizing Tetrion is almost the exact same as regular Tetrion. The only difference is how its proc is applied. Instead of having 2.5% chance to do extra shield damage in one big bulk, Destabilizing Tetrion has a 2.5% chance to apply a stacking shield drain DOT on an enemy for 15 seconds. This energy type is only available from special equipment packs from the Hydrogen Lockbox and can rank up to very rare Mark 12. Next we have Caustic Plasma. Now this one in particular you may be asking yourself what in the world is this thing? That's because this special energy type is only available via the mission replay of Last Stand and is solely obtainable to the Romulan faction. Caustic Plasma does the exact same thing as normal plasma does, however their plasma fire DOTs burn twice as fast, resulting in more damage than basic plasma. This weapon type, however, will only come in rare Mark 11 at max, and always comes with two accuracy modifiers. Next we have Voth Antiproton. All Voth NPCs use this antiproton weapon type. Although this type does fall under the category of Antiproton, it does not share its base's procs. Voth Antiproton has a 25% chance on a critical strike to reduce the damage output of an enemy by 9.1% for 10 seconds, unlike the basic Antiproton that gives 20% critical severity. This special type is only available via special equipment packs via the Voth lockbox and can rank up to very rare Mark 12. Next we have the Kinetic Cutting Beam. This beam, instead of doing energy damage, does kinetic damage, which means it does very little damage to shields, but considerable damage to hull. Now, this isn't really considered an energy type in itself, as no consoles boost its damage, though it is a beam and technically considered a special energy type. 
Now, for the last four special types, I apologize that I was unable to obtain high-resolution images of their icons, so I'm just going to go through this little list here and tell you what they do themselves and how to obtain them. The first two are biomolecular disruptors and biomolecular phasers. These two energy types are pretty much the same thing. Their only difference is a single proc between them which differentiates which base damage type they fall under, those being one of disruptor and one of phaser. The two energy types share a single proc between them, however, and that is a 2.5% chance to apply a debuff to an enemy called biomolecular incubation. This debuff decreases the flight speed of an enemy by 16.7% for 8 seconds. When this debuff finishes, a moderate amount of radiation damage will also be applied to the enemies through shields. The amount of this damage depends on the skills and who you're shooting at. Currently, this weapon is only available in very rare Mark 12 and is obtainable via unlocking them from the 8472 Counter Command Reputation Store, selling each for approximately 20,000 Bellithium. Next, we have Fluidic Antiproton. Unlike its base Antiproton, Fluidic Antiproton does not have a proc to do extra critical severity. Instead, Fluidic Antiproton has a 2.5% chance to repel or push away an enemy by a noticeable distance and do 200 physical damage with 100% shield penetration doing so. This energy type is currently being used by all Undyne NPCs in-game and is only obtainable via special equipment packs from the Undyne lockbox. The special type can rank up to very rare Mark 12. Lastly, we have Phased Biomatter. Phased Biomatter falls under the category of phaser damage, but does not share its proc of disabling subsystems. Instead, Phased Biomatter has a 2.5% chance upon hit of an enemy to create a 1km sphere of damage that is in then divided among up to 4 targets in that radius. This energy type is available up to very rare Mark 12 and is only available via special equipment packs from the Zendi lockbox. And there you have it, everyone. That concludes the walkthrough of all 31 basic, hybrid, and special energy types in-game as of when this video was made. Like I said before, this list will no doubt increase in length as time goes on and more seasons of Star Trek Online come around, and as Delta Rising comes out in October. I hope you all enjoy this video and were able to learn something from it. That concludes this energy type tutorial for now. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.